Good morning. Today we'll be talking about the World Cancer Day and focusing once more on bridging the gap. Thank you, Dr. Adamu, for coming on the program once more. As our president of the Nigerian Cancer Society, it's always a pleasure to have you on this program with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pamela, for having me on the show. A very good morning to viewers and listeners. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. We're talking about cancer. The World Cancer Day, we're talking about bridging the gap. Can you tell us, for those listeners, I'm sure most people know about what cancer is, but just a quick wrap up of what cancer is, what are the commonest cancers in Nigeria, perhaps, and why do we need to keep talking about closing the care gap? Well, um, thank you very much uh, for that question. Well, it is very important. Uh, people know what cancer is. But it's very important for us to understand that cancer is not just one disease entity. Cancer is a conglomeration of diseases, you know, over 200 diseases that can affect basically every living organ. Now, <clears throat> you can have cancers of basically every organ, like I said, and uh, these cancer cells are just cells that have uh, decided to, you know, not follow the normal mechanism that the system, the body has, you know, so they, they undergo uncontrolled, you know, division, multiplication, uh, thereby disturbing or distorting the architecture of the normal cells. And uh, like I said, you can have cancers of uh, basically every living organ. Of life. You can have cancers of the tongue, you can have cancers of the teeth, you can have cancers of the breast, you know, service in women, you can have cancers in the prostate. So now um, in Nigeria, um, not only in Nigeria, actually all over the African continent and indeed all over the world, there are three common cancers that we have. Uh, when you talk about the cancers of the breast, that's number one, uh, the cancer of the service in women, even though this cancer is grossly underdiagnosed in Nigeria, so it's actually number two, but in the real sense, particularly to advocates like me, uh, it is, it can be the number one cancer. Then of course you have the cancer of the prostate, you know, and that, uh, that basically affects men. Now, um, cancers of the breast and uh, cervix affects mainly women, uh, but cancer of the breast, you have one to 2% of men that also develop a cancer of the breast, but it's very rare. So these are three common cancers uh, that are very preventable, actually the most uh, common cancers we have. Over 60% uh, of uh, the cancer presentations in Nigeria and indeed all over the world are from these three common cancers. Now, there are a variety of things that can bring about cancers. Uh, for example, when you talk about uh, uh, you know, cervical cancer, we are talking about the human papilloma virus which is the primary culprit, you know, in the causation of uh, cervical cancer. And, you know, cervical cancer is one cancer uh, that is highly preventable because it has a precancerous stage, uh, you know, that uh, it usually takes over close to 10 years or so uh, to develop into cancers. Now, um, we can have uh, the lifestyle, you know, factors that can cause cancer. You can have predisposing factors such as smoking uh, that can cause cancers. You also have some percentage of cancers that are hereditary in nature. And uh, of course, uh, some cancers that uh, have uh, you know, unknown etiologies, uh, but mostly the predisposing factors are what we pay attention to as cancer advocates. Now, in Nigeria, the problem with cancer is the, you know, the presentation because um, when most of these cancers that are preventable are not uh, detected early, that is why you have uh, you know, complication that usually leads to death. And in Nigeria, that is actually you know, the major issue that we have regarding cancer care gaps that we have in our environment. Uh, most cancers, especially the common ones, uh, come to the hospital or are diagnosed at very late stages when the cancers must have gone to other aspects, to other parts of the body, and thereby uh, becoming uncontrollable, thereby affecting uh, multiple organs of the body, and ultimately death. And this is why when you just oppose the uh, 
you know, the cancer diagnosis in Nigeria, uh, when you have uh, over 70% uh, of the new cancer diagnosis in a particular means that uh, uh, late presentation is actually the major culprit uh, that brings about uh, you know, the, the high level of mortality, the high level of death as a result of cancer. Now, just like in every other low and middle income country like Nigeria, uh, the disparities that exist across the spectrum of care uh, is actually, these are the, these are the health inequities that exist all over, all around us. And these are the, uh, the cancer care gaps that we need to close. So uh, commemorating World Cancer Day, this is the third year of this campaign, which is about uh, you know, closing the care gaps, which is about ad addressing these health inequities that exist in our environment, uh, which is about uh, uh, you know, the push for universal health coverage, uh, because uh, Nigeria, for example, a country of over 200 million, has about 85% of uh, the population paying for healthcare out of their pockets. And you know, cancer treatment is very expensive. And uh, without insurance cover or without appropriate cover for cancer under the insurance uh, scheme, you know, it makes it very difficult because cancer treatment, even to the rich person, is very expensive, talkless of uh, the poor in Nigeria. So cancer is killing our people. Uh, cancer has been a major problem to us. And uh, of course, the myths and misconceptions associated with cancer. In major uh, parts of this country, because of the literacy level of Nigerians, uh, you discover that uh, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions associated with anything that resembles cancer. You know, people are discouraged from going to the hospital, and that is what brings about the late presentation. It's usually when you know, the cancers have advanced, they have, you know, gotten to a stage where uh, you can only, you know, salvage the situation, but not uh, the person. So it is very important that uh, we address the issue of awareness because we have a lot of gaps in awareness, you know, which is a major gap that we have because when we look at the fact that uh, most cancers are preventable, what the people need is the proper education on what to do, and how to do it, when to go for screening, and at what age to start screening. So uh, it is very important. Programs like these are very crucial, you know, in thinking about education to the doorstep of Nigerians, so that Nigerians will be fully equipped, will know uh, what to expect, will know what to do uh, whenever it is uh, necessary, so that uh, we can reduce the cancer burden in Nigeria. No, I think thank you very much. I think that's been very useful and very very you know, sort of succinct a summary of what um, cancer is and the need to close the care gap. And as you mentioned, there's so many of the cancers that are actually preventable, such that if we can, you know, put things in place to make sure people are aware of how to pick them up as, as you know, at an early stage or even the steps they need to take to prevent them, I think it'll go a very long way. Now, there are a number of other issues that we're experiencing in Nigeria specifically, particularly to do with things like the rising cost of drugs. How do you think that care gap can be closed? Well, um, you see, the issue of cost is a major issue uh, in terms of uh, cancer care. Like I said, cancer treatment is very expensive, even to the rich, uh, to less of the poor. And, uh, Almost every one of us, in one way or the other, is affected by cancer. If you don't have a family member that has cancer, you have someone in, within your locality that has cancer. So it basically affects everybody. And uh, in the larger perspective, you know, it, uh, it brings about, you know, it affects, you know, the, the economy of the country because, you know, they say health is wealth. And uh, if a uh, civil servant is away from work, it definitely affects its productivity, it definitely affects the economy of the world, of the country. Now, um, regarding affordability to care, you know, I said earlier that over 85% of Nigerians pay for health care out of their pockets. And so it is very crucial and important uh, that we emphasize the fact that uh, universal health coverage is the way out. Um, we 
are somewhat lucky in Nigeria because last year uh, the National Health Insurance uh, Act was amended making healthcare now compulsory on all Nigerians. And we want to believe that uh, with the new act in play now, the National Health Insurance Authority would up the ante in the fact that the coverage for the formal sector will not only be the stick upon which uh, insurance coverage is major, because when you measure the, uh, the coverage on the part of the formal sector, the civil servants, even with the inclusion of uh, the state uh, health insurance uh, agencies, is still an abysmal percentage because the, the coverage as at last year of the national health insurance was about 12% of the entire population of Nigeria. And the reason is because uh, the non-formal sector, the market women out there, the businessmen out there are not actually covered. The vulnerable in society, the agents, you know, the retired civil servants are not covered. And this is why this new act has some form of remedy. For example, there is the vulnerable fund under the new National Health Insurance Authority Act that is uh, promised to at least cater for about 72 million uh, vulnerable individuals. So now what we need is push by advocates, you know, for proper implementation of the new National Health Insurance Authority Act uh, so that Nigerians will have the cover. Mind you, uh, the insurance cover is now compulsory on all Nigerians according to the act. And so government can I ask, should be safe. Can I jump in and ask a question? Question being, yes, now the, the compulsory, insurance is compulsory. The National you know, Health Insurance is compulsory. However, does it cover cancer? Because a lot of, can, of, of insurance does not cover cancer. So the fact that it's compulsory now, is it also well, see, something that covers the, cancer? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, this is where the problem is. Because, um, you know, insurance is a business. And the, the idea of pulling resources to cater for those uh, that may be sick, uh, when you critically look at the cancer, cancer expenses, you know, we have said it, that cancer treatment is very expensive. So it's very, it's very true that uh, for you to completely cover cancer, it may be a Herculean task, but it's actually doable because you are talking about pulling resources of Nigerians. If currently you are covering for maybe, you are, you are pulling resources for maybe 15% of the population, you can imagine a situation where you are, you are pulling resources from 80 to 90% of the entire population. And I want to believe that uh, with the right apparatus in place, uh, even complete cover for cancer can be can be can be can be is possible, you know. Because okay. right now, under under the National Health Insurance Authority, uh, there is actually some form of cover for cancer, you know. Only that not. But it needs to be expanded. Yes, exactly. expanded, you know. And then of course, uh, the Cancer Health Fund that is play. And uh, even the National Health Insurance Authority also has a cost sharing mechanism, you know, for for cancer care, where uh, the collaboration between the authority and uh, some private uh, pharmaceutical companies, where a certain percentage of uh, the bill is settled by the patient and the government and the partners take the take care of the other part. And again, we also have. Uh, the cancer access program, which is also a cost sharing mechanism uh, where patients pay 50% and uh, the government and the partners pay the remaining 50%. So my belief is that um, if the new law will be fully implemented, uh, the fund for the vulnerable age group, because cancer patients are vulnerable, are also so, in the vulnerable. So, so your, what you're saying is it, it we do expect it to grow. Definitely. Yes. We do okay. To, to Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam Hawa, for coming on the program. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We know you're a cancer survivor and have set Thank up you. a very laudable organization. Can you tell us, you know, what, why did you set it up? And what is your opinion as to how we can help close the care gap in cancer in Nigeria? Thank you, Dr. Pamela, for having me. Uh, I, I appreciate this session. 
Um, my name is Hawa Kakubi. I'm the founder of Save Life Cancer Awareness and uh, Support Network here in Kano State. Um, it's an organization where we focus mainly on creating awareness and providing um, free screening for breast and cervical cancer. What actually uh, motivated me to uh, initiate this foundation is the fact that um, I'm a cancer survivor, um, seven years now, eight years actually, uh, breast cancer survivor. Yeah. So uh, after my audio, I decided to um, uh, establish this foundation so that I can also give back to the society. And um, one critical issue that we have in the society is lack of awareness. Yes. The cancer is there. Cancer has always been there. And we know early detection is key. But knowledge is more key because if you are aware of this, if you are aware of the signs and symptoms, if you know what to do, what where to go, how to take care of yourself, it beats even detecting it because uh, what we say is that um, when you know about the disease, it's cheaper than the cure. So awareness is cheaper than the cure. So what I want to have on is awareness. Let's take this awareness to the grassroots. Let's take this awareness everywhere. Yes, uh, the health insurance is trying, and um, as Dr. Adamu said, um, it's going to it's compulsory um, insurance is for everyone. But you were always you were also asking if it covers um, cancer. So the issue now is that if we are aware, if we know, if we know the signs and symptoms of this disease, less presentation will be very less, and even the cost of insurance will be less. The cost will be less. Everybody is running away from the cancer because of the high cost. We all know how it is. Even way back then, it's more expensive, not to talk of now, rising economy and all that and all that. So, but the cheapest mode of curing cancer is awareness. It costs nothing, next to nothing to make people be aware. And that's why we focus on creating this awareness. We let the people know we provide screening, baseline screening to these women so that whatever is detected at an earlier stage is cheaper and very easy to detect. It will curve the issue of a late presentation. It will curve the issue of, 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 uh, yeah, of so many other issues that is going to arise as a result of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very helpful, and I think that is something that we all take on board. That's why we're here talking about cancer right now, and I think we need to do a lot more. Thank you very much, Engineer Dozier. Thank you. Can we speak to you? Thank you. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Can you share with us also the details about your own um, organization? And how and why, you know, you set it up. Uh, in your opinion, what are the important things we need to do about closing the care gap in Nigeria? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pamela, for having me. And um, good morning, listeners. Um, Nest of Hope Advocacy and Support Community were just founded out of sheer passion for um, maybe survivorship, having passed through cancer, the diagnosis, the treatment, and the recovery, you know? So the journey has been hectic. So I think I draw, I drew passion, or drew my emotion, I put them together, I wrap them as a pack. Now put the energy into um, survivorship. That is what Nest of Hope is all about. And um, what we do is advocacy. Advocacy in the sense that the all of us agree that the disparity is much. The burden is huge, and it's not something one person can carry. I've argued that every cancer patient stroke survivor at one point or the other becomes indigent. And that is fact. So we are trying to like take, in, take action 
bringing people or encouraging people to come together because for us to close the care gap, right? It is not something one person will do. It needs everybody. And there's something that I am interested in also outside survivorship. And that is not just um, awareness, right? Not just for people to uh, begin to be this in control. How do we control this? There, there are a lot of things like, no, no, apart from cervical cancer, like Dr. Damu mentioned, that is linked to HPV. Most cancers do not know, in fact, the, um, the reason or the cause is not known. Now, we only talk about the risk factors, which lifestyle is maybe uh, among or plays the private role. So, but when we are talking about this lifestyle modification, you see that what we eat, what we take, is a whole lot uh, contributing factor to this minute. Now, you look at it, it seems as if we have a system that encourages the health of the industries or the economy of the industries more than the uh, health of the citizens. So we are looking at government to put a control to things that we eat or that are produced where we eat, right? If you talk, if you look at um, the carbonated things, drinks, packaged food, and all the rest of them, nobody knows how they are being produced. There is no money tra money train, right? And all these things are thrown into the market. They are afford they are kind of accessible. They are easy to 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 reach, right? Now. Yes, what do we, they're, they're what easy do to access. So what you're talking about is something like for the government to put measures in place to protect the public. Is that yes. what I'm hearing from you? To close that, that care gap. That's correct. Then uh, secondly. Okay. Then, okay, you just need to wrap up. I'm sorry, because a third person has to speak and we haven't got very much. Okay, now to also, the, when we are talking about the impacted ones, we are talking about closing the care gap as regards the people who have been affected. You see, like Dr. Damu captured, it's a lot of policies are on ground, but le much talk, but less action. As a cancer survivor, I, there's less things that we are seeing as per all these policies, all these things that are on ground. The only way to closing this care gap uh, is for government to come into uh, create, making accessible, right, these treatment options from uh, uh, okay. uh, surgery to uh, drugs and to all of them together. So affordability and accessibility is key, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that's very useful. Our last uh, um, lady, Ethel, are you present? Yes, I'm here. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Can Dr. You also, sorry, there's not much time left, but we want to hear from you. Can you tell us quickly why you set up your foundation and what your opinion is as a survivor as to how we need to clear to close the cancer care gap in Nigeria? We have just two minutes left. Thank you so much, Dr. Pamela. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my president, good evening. Okay, so my name is Etel Olomo. I'm the founder of Engrace Life Foundation and also a stage four breast cancer survivor. In Engrace Life, we're into advocacy, free screening, and a whole lot and support for, for cancer. And uh, our advocacy will tend to like uh, go to the rural communities because whatever I'm doing is uh, I use myself because it's a shoe I've worn. We do this, apart from the advocacy, going to the rural communities, I went through a lot of stigma because then nobody was talking about cancer is, is a subject that was like a secrecy, like don't talk about it because everybody, nobody there was no awareness around it that this is a sickness, maybe like malaria or typhoid or maybe kidney. People just said that having cancer, you must have offended one God or the other. That is why the rots of the gods came upon you. So, you know, going through that stigma and coming out of it strong, I, I, I owe it as a duty to my to people to like to others to like communicate to them that you don't have to feel guilty for having cancer cancer can happen to anybody big small rich poor east west anywhere black white no matter your color 
cancer can come. So you don't have to uh, kill yourself. You don't, because a lot of people are suicidal. And also, uh, I remember when going through cancer, I had a lot of support from my family. What if I didn't have that? Because now I, a lot of people reach out to me because some of them, their husbands divorced them, family abandoned them. I, I know of a man that abandoned the wife in the hospital two weeks ago. We had to even go and bail her to rescue her from the hospital. So all those things made me go into that because of personal experience and also make people understand that cancer is nobody's fault. It can happen to anybody. And you know, Advocacy in cancer, nobody talks about it to them in the rural community. They feel they've offended the gods too. There was a lot of advocacy in the city, but the rural communities we all go to. Whenever I go there and we say this is cancer, they tell us no, they've offended the gods. That is why this came upon them, the road came upon them. That is the drive. That is our mission. Why we go to the rural communities, mostly advocacy and support. That's, That's fantastic. And also, Thank you very much. A lot of them getting back on their feet is a huge challenge because they don't know how to. A, a come back to the society because of the stigma and everything. So we try to tell people, lend your voice, support, and don't stigmatize or condemn anyone because cancer can happen to anybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, we really appreciate that. So that support that you give. And I must say the three of you are a huge inspiration. A lot of people seeing you now can't believe the number of years you've survived. But I think speaking on this program is going to give a lot of people hope. So thank you very much for coming and for sharing all that you have um, with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for sharing all your thoughts and your information and your, your presence, your very presence with us really means a great deal. So thank you very much for all that you do, all of you in, in the special ways in which you do it. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for new video updates.